Hello there, welcome to this video where I'm going to show you a few magic tricks that are great for both beginners and professionals alike. Tricks that are not only simple, but easy and fun. Before we start, let me state two things. That one, just because a trick is simple or easy doesn't mean it's a bad trick. The second thing is I'm not gonna be revealing most of the tricks here today. Most of these tricks are marketable, purchasable effects, and I don't want to reveal anyone's intellectual property. With that said, let's get into two tricks you can get started on right now. For this first trick, I'm gonna take a deck of cards and give it a bit of a shuffle. Then I ask the spectator to select any card they want to. They could even hold the deck themselves and select it. Let's say they select this card. I'm gonna turn away while I show the camera the card. And the spectator could even bury the card into the deck themselves like this. And so the card is now buried in the middle of the deck. All the magician has to do is pull the cards to himself and say, I'm going to find your card. So as he does, I think I found it. It is the Ten of Hearts. And then the spectator would say, no, it was the Queen of Spades. The mission said, oh, I, I can fix this. Hold on. If I just give the card a little bit of a rub, it'll chain into the Queen of Spades. This trick utilizes the key card principle. I'll show you how that works. Let's say the spectator chooses any card, like this one. While they are looking at the card, all the magician has to do is remember this bottom card, the nine of clubs in this case. When the spectator buries their card into the deck, what they're actually doing is placing their card right beside the nine of clubs. So when the magician gets the deck in his hands, all he has to do is look for that nine of clubs which is there. And this is the card to the right of the Nine of Clubs will be their chosen card. That alone is a good trick in itself, but you could also spice it up a little bit by doing what's called the Erdnay's color change. I'll give you a quick tutorial on that. Uh, let's say you have the Ace of Spades and you have a card that's contrasting to it, like the Jack of Spades. You don't want a card that looks similar to the Ace of Hearts or whatever card you're using, otherwise the color change won't look as good. So a card that is contrasting would be great. So let's say you have, you know the card is the Ace of Hearts and you see the Jack of Spades right beside it. So you're gonna cut the deck to that point with their chosen card right behind the Jack of Spades. And you'll say, I know your card is the Jack of Spades. Of course it's not, it's the Ace of Hearts, but we're gonna pretend like we don't know. You say, oh, well, let me just try something real quick. So to do the Erdnay's color change, all you do is push that card forward a bit, pull the Ace of Hearts, and then square the deck up like that. But you're doing this all under the cover of your hand. So you push the Jack of Spades up, pull the Ace of Hearts, and now it's kind of in the palm of my hand. And then I'm gonna square the deck up while pull, pushing the Ace of Hearts over it. So in motion, push jack of spades, pull ace of hearts, square the deck up, pull ace of hearts over the jack, and it looks like the card has magically changed. This next trick I'm going to show you, you could either do it with your spectator or let the spectator do it by themselves. So you'd ask them just to pick up half the deck, a quarter of the deck, a third of the deck, however much they want. And if you're doing the trick with them, you'll hold on to this pack, but otherwise, they will just hold on to this. You ask them to start dealing a few cards down, straight down in a nice pile. And you could ask them maybe to deal from the bottom if they wanted to. Maybe they wanted to cut the deck and deal. Maybe they wanted to deal in clumps. Maybe they don't even want to use all the cards. Maybe they want to stop there. Next, you would ask them just to deal the cards in four rows, left to right. So one, two, three, four. And then keep going, left to right. One, two, three, four. All the way until all of those cards are dealt. So at this point, you remind them, well, you handled the deck yourself. You cut where you wanted to, you dealt the cards down, you shuffled it, mixed it up however what you wanted to, and you dealt the cards yourself. Did you realize that you actually dealt out the four aces? Let me show you how to do this trick. You need to start with the four aces on top of the deck, like this. At the beginning, you'll notice I did a shuffle, which is convincing to help people think that the deck is mixed up. 
how I accomplished that shuffle was I left a little bit more cards in my right hand where the aces are than I did in the left hand. So naturally when you start ripple shuffling, you'll end up with more cards where the aces are. So that way the aces stay in order, but the rest of the deck's deck gets mixed. From there, you'll have them take the deck however much they want. Let's say they take this much. And then from there, you ask them to deal cards face down in a nice pile. Let them deal down at least four cards, which are gonna be the four aces. And then from there, you ask them to start dealing you know, from the bottom, you know, maybe from the middle, maybe in clumps, it doesn't matter. As long as those four aces get down at the bottom in order, your trick is going fine. Let's say that they use these amount of cards and they deal out four cards individually. Now, if you're doing this trick along with them, you'll have another four piles and you could make a joke and say, I don't know if you noticed, but I was actually, I was actually a little bit sneaky and I put the four aces on top of my piles. But when you turn the, your piles over, they won't be the four aces. Then you ask them to turn over the top card in their pile, and that will be the four aces. This is such a great trick because you don't handle their cards at all. It really seems like absolute magic. Let's do one more card trick. Say you hand the spectator an invisible deck of cards. And you ask them to shuffle that deck up as much as they want, and then to pick out one card and turn it the wrong way. Place it back inside the deck and hand you back the deck of invisible cards. Uh, and so let's say they do that and you say, well, this deck here is actually sympathetic to that invisible deck that you were just handling. And so you'd ask them, what card did they turn upside down? And so let's just say they chose the five of clubs. You would say, watch carefully. Remember how I told you the deck was sympathetic. You pull out the deck of cards and then slowly spread through the cards. And they would see that there's one card face down, just like how they put one card face down in their invisible deck. That card is, in fact, the Five of Clubs. This trick is called the Invisible Deck. I'll leave a link down to it in the description. It's such an easy, simple trick that absolutely blows people's minds. Next, I want to show you one of my absolute favorites. In this wooden box, which you could let the spectators, of course, examine, there is a cube with multiple colors on it. I'm gonna kind of turn my head away and kind of just feel around the cube and pick a random color. So this color, and to pick the color, I'm gonna put it inside the box face up and put the lid on. And as you can see, I'll turn my head back now. There's no possible way I could figure out what color. I could even put this behind my back and I couldn't figure out, I couldn't see what color was in there. But somehow, the magician knows that the color that was selected was green. This trick is called color vision. It might also be called mental dye or television. This is a $30 version from Torah Magic. There's also cheaper, smaller versions like this one. All of them use the same very deceptive but simple principle. Don't let the appearance of this trick, its simplicity, catch you off guard. In my wallet I have, among other things, a silver half dollar and a blue Chinese coin. I'd ask the spectator to select either coin and let's just say they choose the half dollar. I'd ask them to hold on to the half dollar and watch very carefully as it changes places with the Chinese coin half dollar is inside the case. This trick is called Lethal Tinder. There are many versions, many, many manufacturers for this trick. This is a custom version that I've made. I strongly suggest purchasing the original version so that you kind of get the idea behind how the trick works and then if you'd like to, to work on making your own set. I have three cards, two tens and a red six. We're going to play a shoot game called Three Card Monte. Your job is to follow this card in the middle, that indifferent card, that red six. Ready? Watch very carefully. There's the six. You still following? What if I switch it like that? What if I switch it like this? What if I switch it like that? Do you still know where that six is? And people will point towards the middle. You say, that's not the six, that's actually 
the blank card. This is a really quick trick that could just be done in your hands and be done in about 30 seconds. This is a trick that you could make at home, but again, I'd strongly suggest purchasing an official version so that you get an idea behind the trick and how to perform it, and then you can go about making your own set. In this envelope, I have three cards, a pink, a yellow, and a blue. I ask the spectator to select any one of these cards, and let's just say they choose, that's kind of yellow, let's say they choose yellow. And I would tell them, I knew you, choose, you would choose yellow. In fact, I was so confident that you would choose yellow that I actually wrote a slip inside of the so the folder here. Nothing else in there. I knew you'd select yellow. This trick goes by a few different names. Hypnotic Choice, Mind Control. Again, this is one that you could make at home, but again, I would strongly suggest for you to buy the trick first to get understand how it works, the materials required, and kind of the performance behind it before you go about making your own set. Let's try another coin trick. In my left hand, I have a Mexican centavo, which is kind of copper colored. And in my right hand, I have a silver Kennedy half dollar. They, they're they easy to tell apart because they're different colors, but also because centavo is a bit smaller than the half dollar. I hand both these coins to my spectator, and I present it kind of like a hypnosis effect, where I tell them, we're gonna try a hypnosis test, okay? So the first test, the control test, is I want you to hand me the half dollar, which is the bigger coin. So they'd reach inside their hand and they'd pull out the half dollar. Next I tell them, okay, now the hypnotic part. I'm gonna hypnotize you so that you can't hand me the centavo. And so they'd reach into their hand and pull out a quarter. This trick is called Scotch and Soda. Again, many different manufacturers, many different versions. The trick really is as easy and simple as just putting the coins into someone's hands. So this next trick is one of my favorites. Just for a little later, I'd like the spectator to cut the deck wherever they like. So maybe they cut here and we'll just mark where they cut like that. I have this kind of chalkboard scorecard just to help us keep track of the answers uh, we're about to give. So I'm gonna try to do three things. Three demonstrations of extrasensory perception. Kind of silly, right? I'm gonna try to predict what you're going to say. Next, I'm going to try to read your mind. And lastly, I'm going to try to divine knowledge that no one knows. Not you or me. No one knows. So this first thing, I'm going to try to predict what you're going to say. Before you even said it, before I even asked you a question, I'm going to try to predict what you're going to say. I'll cover my prediction. That way I can't influence you or anything like that. So, I'd like you to say your favorite color. And so let's just say, tap those a bunch of times. They say their favorite color is green. So we would write down green. It says green. There's not a lot of space. All right, so next, I'm gonna to try to read your mind. So I want you to think of any three digit number. So let's say the thing of a three digit number. And so I'm gonna start writing, trying to read their mind. I'm gonna cover up my answer. And so then I ask them, what three digit number were they thinking of? So let's just say they said 943. Forty-three. Lastly, I'm going to try to divine knowledge that no one knows. So earlier I had you cut to a part of the deck and no one has seen this card yet. I'm going to try to divine the information of what that card is right now. Asked him to lift up the card and finally reveal what it was the Jack of Clubs. So, just to recap, I tried to predict what you were going to say. And the color you said was green. I predicted that you would say green. 
Next, I tried to read your mind, and the number you were thinking of was 943. I read your mind, and I wrote down 943. Lastly, there is this card that its identity was not known to me, or you, or anyone. It was the Jack of Clubs. I divined that the card was the Jack of Clubs. This trick is called the Mental Epic. There are many different versions, manufacturers. There are versions with small chalkboards or versions with large chalkboards. There's versions with just pencil and paper, but it's the same principle behind any of them. This next trick is my personal favorite. Move away and reach inside. Looks just like real magic. We'll place it right back where it came. And it's gonna take a while because this is really, really long. Give it a little wave. It's gone. This is a trick, or rather a device that's been revealed to a lot of different people. The question is, can you still use this device today? I would say the answer is yes. The key behind it is not doing the moves associated with it, using it maybe in a different way, or maybe just changing the color of what you're producing. Here's another way to use this device that isn't used very commonly. Watch. I have this little red scarf, red little red handkerchief, and a yellow one, and this green one. They just keep coming. And a blue one. Look at that. Look at all those. Give it a little magical wave and watch this. They all turn into one single handkerchief. When people think of magicians, they often think of Harry Houdini, who was a magician, but he was more known as an escape artist. So this trick is a neat way to add a little bit of that escape artistry, a little bit of that kind of expectation into your routine. Start out with this getting very tightened and then wrapping your wrist up with it. And then you have a spectator, tie it, and tighten it. And as you can see, I'm quite tight, tightly tied up and with my hands completely covered up. I can actually almost instantly escape. This trick is called the Siberian Chain Escape. Uh, Royal Magic has a very inexpensive version. It's a great way to add some escape magic, so a little bit of flash and a little bit of danger into your routine. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, if you were looking for easy, simple tricks to do, hopefully you found them here today. Thank you for watching. Peace.